Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Welcome Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey, and today we're talking week six in the NFL. Already through, almost almost all the way through six weeks. A lot of uh, interesting games again today, some interesting results and some comebacks. So we're going to go through all that again right now. We'll start it off, Jeff. Titans, Texans. Titans had to come back in this one and get the win there. It looks like the Texans were going to pull this off, but Titans get the win. Derrick Henry goes nuts. 22 carries, 212 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, mainly off of his nine, not mainly, but boosted by his 94-yard touchdown, which that's Derrick Henry. I mean, that's what he can do. The guy's, he can be really good at times. So, I mean, great game from Henry and then a great game from Ryan Tannehill. You know, 364 yards, four touchdowns. Just, he, he's good. He really is good. I just never thought this would happen like this, but Tannehill's good. Jonu Smith goes down with an injury, and then, the, like, but they just, it didn't affect him at all. They just went to the next tight end. What, Fer, Fer, Ferkser? <laughs> Eight for 113 <laughs> and a touchdown? Jeez. And then A.J. Brown caught two. Just really good team that this Titans team is, is good. You know, they're just good. What, 5-0 and oh now? Yeah, keep churning out the wins. It's good to see the consistency, especially with Tannehill. Um, I mean, you know, being a, a fan, but you didn't really know what that was going to look like as far as production. He has yep. definitely scored more touchdowns than I think anyone really thought. Um, I mean, no, can, do you think that he can continue this kind of trend? Because what, the last two games he's had four touchdowns? I mean, the offense is clicking this well or – it's not even taken away from the running game. So I know maybe not four touchdowns every time, but he, he's a great fantasy option every week at this point. And I don't, this team is good. They, and they're not winning like they were, you know, last year at the end of the year in the playoffs where they're just barely throwing the ball and running the ball all the time. They're actually, you know, opening up the offense. It looks pretty good there. So, you know, play, play Tannehill at this point. And uh, Texans go to one and five, but I mean, it was a good fantasy day for Deshaun Watson. 335 yards, four touchdowns. Really, really solid day there. Threw a touchdown to Fuller, who went six for 123. Touchdown to Fells, who went six for 85. Cooks, nine for 68 touchdown. And then Randall Cobb caught one too. So Fuller looked good. Cooks had back-to-back now. Good, solid games after doing nothing a couple weeks ago. The offense is getting there. This team's still not any good, I guess, but at least their offense is looking decent. Um, David Johnson, 57 yards on the ground, a touchdown. So touchdown makes his day okay, but he's just he's just not – He's fine. He's just not that good at this point. He's just a he's just a guy really out there. So, but good to see Houston get back on track at least offensively. I don't really care if they win or lose. <laughs> I don't care about that. Right. I just care about fantasy purposes here. And then yeah, um, and it is interesting. And I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's hard to tell what is real and what is not with this team. I think they're going to be really up and down. Yeah. I think you know you, you look at it and you're kind of like Deshaun Watson somehow is making it worthwhile to have him still. Um, I'm still worried that uh, what that is going to turn into. Um, Brandon Cooks though, he's finally starting to come around. Is someone that we talked about like, hey, you can get him for cheap. Yeah. He's another one. What do you feel about him moving forward? Because Will Fuller, I think everyone knows the talent is there as long as he's healthy. You play him. You know, David Johnson is just – he's going to get a lot of carries, so yeah. you just keep playing him because he can. But I think Brandon Cooks is like a legit wide receiver people should really worry about or think about because he can give you these high days. Yeah, and but- obviously he was just not there, you know, not existing in the first couple. Is that more of getting used to the offense, or do you think that he can ghost you? I think he still can ghost you, honestly. I worry about that, but I think at this point you you play him. I think you do play him and hope that day doesn't come. But I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a one for five day. You know, it's just uh, it, nothing about that would be surprising to me with Cooks. Fuller, at least Fuller is staying healthy for the most part so far. So he keeps playing well, but I don't know. The team one in five, uh, that's a big surprise on the year. How about next up, Colts, Bengals. Colts come back from, they were down 21 nothing in this thing. Come back to win 31-27. Rivers went 371 and three touchdowns. I'll give him that. I'm still not going to consider him in fantasy. but I know. He must have hurt us bad enough. I'm still not going to go for it. But, you know. And so they got down early. So they really weren't able to get Taylor going on the ground because of that. Being down three touchdowns, they just got to throw the ball. So Taylor only had 12 for 60. He did catch four for 55. So 
115 total yards. So, you know, it's solid with, you know, minimal touches. And then um, the receiving group is what Marcus Johnson, I think with five for one Oh eight and uh, T Y Hilton one for 11 T Y Hilton is just droppable hundred percent droppable at this point. Right. Like that guy's, I mean, he's, he's kind of useless. So. Yeah. Not looking good. The, the guy on this team that is, I think interesting um, tight end. So Burton, Trey Burton, he kind of was the big, you know, one of the, the top 10 almost like uh, just a year ago. Right. And, and he comes to Indianapolis and he, he was hurt the first couple of games. You were kind of like, okay, Mo Ali Cox is here. He comes back and the last couple of games, he immediately gets thrown in where he's getting, you know, five to six targets a game. And today he it finally paid off, right? He got two touchdowns to even let him rush one in. So big game as far as fantasy goes, especially for a tight end. How real is Trey Burton in this offense? I got to see a little bit more to it. But the thing is, there isn't a lot of pass catchers right now that are doing much. If Hilton's not, so Burton be, can become a thing. Uh, Mo Alley Cox is obviously third in line now on this in this group at tight end. And Jack Doyle's okay. But Burton, I mean, he had talent when he went over to Chicago and it just never, you know, never played out. I'm, I'm interested in it. I think, especially with the tight end landscape, I mean, you got to, it's always weak at tight end. So you got a guy like Burton, maybe he could get a little more. I just don't love this passing game in general though. Um, I, I don't trust Phillip rivers to get me much. I don't know. This was a, now they're playing the Bengals. I got to see a little more, you know, on better teams. Uh, Bengals side of things, burrow three thirteen. no touchdowns through the air. Did run one in Mixon, eh, mediocre 18 of 18 carries 54 yards. He did get a touchdown though. Yeah, he gets that. You know, not getting the big games that we were hoping, except for the one, but there's that. But T. Higgins looks good. Well, Six for one twenty five. Okay. This is this is the thing though. I do want to make this a callback, right? It was two mm-hmm. weeks ago when he had his big game. Was it two or, or one? Mm-hmm. Anyway, two weeks ago he had his yeah, big week, game. Week four. Yeah. And we we had talked about him and my exact thing was kind of what's coming to to fruition right Mm -hmm. because i said hey like we finally got a game out of mixon he looked he looked really good but and i said this would be the perfect time to go trade for him after two more games because you're about to hit two really good defenses and he's not going to look good he did not look good and he finally he did get a touchdown there's three that you know three rushing today so you know we can say bernard actually say it's not a vulture, but it yeah. could be Burrow yeah. rushed one in. So, you know, it did open up the opportunity for him to have more touchdowns. But I do think Mixon is a guy with the talent he has, even though this team is still lackluster, they're going in the right direction. I do think now that he's out of that kind of danger zone and he has two poor games, I think this is where you go and try to trade for him. I mean, that is that is yeah. really where my head is at because I Indianapolis s- is no joke. I mean, 4-2 mm-hmm. and their defense is good. And I think before this, what, did they play Baltimore? Was if I'm correct? Yeah, um, I believe so. And obviously, that defense is no joke either. So Mixon, big game, two great mm-hmm. defenses. This is where you'd go and get them if you can. Yeah, I still believe in the talent, obviously. So I, I think there's better days to come. Yeah, and let's be honest too. I mean, at, against a good defense, they gave him 18 carries. It was only 54 yards, right? He averaged three yards a carry. It's not what you want to see, but he did get in the end zone. They did keep giving him the ball. I love seeing that because I, I hate getting these running backs that, hey, if it's not your day, you're only going to get four carries. Right. There's no way you can produce on that. So, I, I mean, even with this where, you know, he, he wasn't great, I, I still say, oh, I could I could have played him against a really good defense. So I just want to make that, that point very crystal clear because I, I know a lot of people are kind of wondering who should they trade for, who could they get. I think this guy is like prime time real estate at the moment. Yep, and then uh, receiving group is at Higgins, six for 125. He's looking pretty good. It was nice to see A.J. Green play actually well, eight for 96 on 11 targets. Dude, so. finally. And I have to – I I ask you this all the time going forward. <laughs> is this real, though? Because we've seen him get a lot of targets before. The target – yeah. He finally put it together. Well, right? He had 11 targets. I mean, and this is not the first time he's gone double digits in there, and this is the first time it's actually paid off. I'm hoping that it can be a little more real because the targets have been there for the most part, most of the games, not every game, but for the most part, targets have been there and maybe Burrow and green are just finally getting a little connection. Burrow's are getting settling down a little bit. So I'd like to think it actually can be real. I really, um, you know, he's going to be better than he was at least. So, 
Oh, next up, how about Falcons getting their first win of the year uh, over the Vikings, 40 to 23. Falcons are now one in five. Vikings are now one in five. Um, <laughs> just when ugh. just when we had our disappointment yeah. list, and I said, I put Julio at number three, and I said, I put him number three because I think he can turn it around. He does this. Yeah, <laughs> this like, is Julio oh, for you. Oh, I forgot. He's he's a man. And he's, he's playing good. with a bunch of boys. <laughs> yeah. Yep, eight for 137, two touchdowns. Uh, Matt Ryan threw for four touchdowns, 371 yards. Like, Ryan can play well at times like this, but then he can play terrible. But Minnesota, Minnesota is not good. So let's just, like, let's remember that. I know I, that that one is hard to kind of swallow though, because Minnesota's defense has been good in the past couple of years. Yeah, I'm not sure happened. where they went. Um, but before yeah. we talk about them, I guess, finish out the oh, yeah. Ridley gets himself six for 61 in a touchdown. Hurst caught a touchdown, but Gurley 20 carries, but only turned it into 47 yards. Ugly. Um, I guess that's the bad spot of this offense today. Uh, yeah. It's just that that was ugly, but what are you going to do? You know? Yeah. And, and to be fair, uh, Brian Hill also had 10 carries. So yep. he had 10 carries and he only turned into 28 yards. So yep. it was a poor rushing attack the, the entire game. It wasn't just girly. Yep. Um, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that was Atlanta's O line or Minnesota. That's, you know, their D line is that good and their secondary was that poor. I'm not, I'm not sure which way that, that goes. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it was, it was good to see Julio. That was, that was my big thing. Kelvin Ridley still did his thing. He still caught a touchdown. So great. But on the other side, yeah. um, I do have to say Minnesota disappointed so, me a lot today. Yeah, so, well, Cousins threw three touchdowns, but threw three picks, <laughs> 343 yards. That's a cousin, I don't know, Cousins just all over. The biggest disappointment, I think, of the day is Alexander Madison with his 10 carries, 26 yards, and four, yard, four yards receiving, so 30 total yards. He was a top five ranked back, I think, in by most people this week, playing against Atlanta, getting all the work. And he just disappointed. He didn't do it. Just terrible. But a guy who didn't disappoint, Justin Jefferson, nine for one sixty six and two touchdowns. He's good. I love this one. This guy is going to uh, help me in a lot of leagues. I mean, it's beautiful, and I can get a rookie that late, and he can put up these kind of numbers. So hopefully, if you if you didn't draft him, then you did go out and try to get him in. You know, in waivers because he is going to be the real deal. He's going to continue to do this kind of stuff. Adam Thielen, 51 yards and a touchdown. So he didn't he didn't kill you by any means. He was still involved. Yeah, He was fine. But, I mean, Justin Jefferson, he was on a different level. I mean, 11 targets. He caught nine of them. I mean, and I guess the other thing as well, because obviously that's one and two, you know, Thielen mm-hmm. and Justin Jefferson, whoever is open, Cousins will throw it to. I think he has a good rapport with both now. But I do like seeing Irv Smith in the last two games especially getting a little bit of footing and he is a, a very athletic tight end, a very talented young guy. It usually takes a couple of years. This is the second year. I, I don't think that I'm not saying this is the moment where you can play him or use him, but I do think if you're in a dynasty league, uh, it, it gives you hope for the future. And if you do have like a, an empty roster spot, he is a guy that I think I would stash. Um, I'm stashing yeah. him currently on mine. I've, I started early, obviously, but you're finally starting to see what he could turn into. Um, but it's still, mm-hmm. a, it's still a ways off. So if you're just in a, you know, a redraft league, still not time to grab him. Next game, we got Broncos, Patriots. Broncos win this one, 18 to 12. Patriots didn't look good. And I mean, it's almost kind of surprising the Broncos won this thing. Drew, Drew Locke wasn't good. He was 10 of 24 for 189 and two picks. Uh, Tim Patrick, though, got four of those catches for 101. So another good game from T- Tim Patrick. And then um, Philip Lindsay, 23 carries, 101 yards. So he looked good, but not much else on that offense. It was just, that's it. I mean, that wasn't because the offense was any good. So the Broncos won. It's Patriots just didn't get much going there. Cam Newton threw for 157, no touchdowns, two picks. He did run a touchdown in and got 10 carries for 76 yards. But I mean, nothing else on the ground. Damian Harris didn't get going. James White caught eight for 65. It was just an ugly game. I don't even want to talk about this game. This was ugly. (laughs) <laughs> there's nothing yeah. there's nothing here i was gonna say there's nothing fun to even talk about here uh damian harris not what we wanted to see you know i mean we thought that maybe he would do better cam newton even though he had a bad game he rushed he i mean i wouldn't even say he salvaged it but at least he's able to get those rushing yards which you love but no yeah. one else on this team is is even worth talking about you know no. so everyone i talked about was it was negative yeah. on the other side of it i mean i think you you hit it right tim patrick 
looks like he is going to be a, a solid wide receiver from here on out, you're hoping. And, you know, and whoever is the main back will probably be very playable for them. But other than that, I mean, it, it was it was ugly. It was not the the best game of the day. <laughs> and you know, speaking of more ugly games, we got Giants Red or Redskins. I was going to say, geez, well, Giants Giants Washington here. Giants. We knew the, this one was going to be ugly, though. <laughs> yeah, Washington into it. Washington scored there at the end and went for two to try to win it, and they didn't get it in, so they lose. Kyle Allen, two touchdowns. He's just not a. He's just you're not going to play Kyle Allen ever. The running game is uh, Antonio Gibson is never is not going to get a full workload and. It's just how it's going to be. J.D. McKissick is is there, and it makes it so you really don't want to play. I mean, McKissick is more of the fantasy value, I would think, than Gibson is at this point because G- McKissick is getting more through the air by sl- slightly more. I don't know. I just don't – it's just ugly here. Terry McLaurin's honestly the only player I want here, and he had seven for 74, 12 targets. He's going to get targets. He's going to do decent, but – if he was on a better team, obviously it'd be a lot better situation. Right. I, I do have to ask you this though, because I know that you're a Terry McLaurin yeah. guy. And I, I seriously wonder this with everything they're going through at this point, you, they, I mean, they want the best draft pick they can possibly have, right? They know they're no good. Um, going for two might've been a stroke of genius. You get it and you look like, you know, you look great. If you don't, you get another loss. Oh no, against a very terrible team. All of a sudden we're winning the, the lat, you know, the draft yep. lottery. Uh, Terry McLaurin is the only person on this team that is mm-hmm. that is probably worth having for the most part. Antonio Gibson, you can make a strong case for, but take him out of it because, you know, yeah. of everything going on. Terry McLaurin, where do you rank him for the rest of the year? Is this a guy that you can comfortably say is a wide receiver two, wide receiver three, flex position? Should you try to trade him? What are you thinking? Because I know that you believe in the talent, but the team stinks. I still think he's a back-end wide receiver two just because of the targets, but – I don't think you try to trade him either, though, because I don't think the value is great, you know, at this point. I still think there's going to be some more. Kyle Allen, I think, is he's better than Haskins was, at least, I think. At least, he, at least he's just looking. He's he, he's looking. Old statement here. <laughs> he's, by the yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, looking for, he's looking for McLaurin. I guess that's the only thing. I think the talent and the targets alone will keep him as a back-end wide receiver, too. I wouldn't try to trade him, though. I just don't think there's much to – really much value to get get from him maybe, maybe someone out there's likes him but it's hard to trade a guy on a meet i mean a really bad team this doesn't work very well then the other bad team in this one the giants i mean daniel jones 12 and 19 112 yards and a touchdown geez like this guy's he's not good uh, Devonte freeman ran for 61 yards and then slayton catches a touchdown on his two catches just ugly i don't it's, yeah whatever that's a bad game. <laughs> yeah, another one, another very bad game. Oh, how about this? Ravens beat the Eagles thirty to twenty-eight. Eagles came back in this one and then uh, missed the two-point conversion that would have tied it up. Lamar, much better fantasy day there. One hundred eighty-six through the air and a touchdown. And then he ran nine of one hundred eight and a touchdown. There we go. That's what you want to see mm-hmm. um, from Lamar. The rest of the running game, though, Ingram went out with an injury, and then it became Gus Edwards is the was the guy getting the majority of the carries again over Dobbins. Um, I wouldn't even say I mean, he didn't look good. He was 14 carries for 26 yards. Dobbins nine for 28. It's not like he's good either, but um, well, it'd be interesting to see what happens if uh, Ingram is out. It's just probably going to be a split. I mean, every time I see, every time I'm watching the Ravens and I see Dobbins, I feel like, feel like I'm watching Ray Rice there for a minute. It's like a mini Ray <laughs> Rice out there, same number and everything. It'd be interesting to see how that plays out though. And then the receivers, it's just, it was just, there wasn't a lot. It was only 16 completed passes and Nick Boyle gets the touchdown, not Mark Andrews. And, yeah, just this is this is a typical Ravens right here, right? I mean, it's Lamar, and then the rest don't do a lot. So, yeah, that's what this year has become. Yep. And the defense, I mean, it looked like it was going to be a blowout, and then the fourth quarter hit, and all of a sudden, Philadelphia woke up and was like, "Oh, we should probably score." Mm-hmm. Scoring twenty two points, almost tying it up, uh, it saves a lot of people's fantasy, right? Because Miles Sanders, I mean, go down the list, especially Carson Wentz. I mean, he was having an abysmal day before that. Yeah, so Sanders, nine carries, 118 yards, one, ran for a 74-yarder, which another big run saves his day. But then he goes out with the injury, so let's see what that was. I don't really mm-hmm. get an update on that yet. But Wentz, is, he had two touchdowns, but, man, he's just not the same player as he was a few years ago. I don't know. This has a lot to do with maybe the receivers out there. I mean, Travis Fulgham is like his leading guy right now, six for 75 yeah. and a touchdown. Which or, is very important to say, too, because he was obviously a waiver pickup. Yep. Uh, you're wondering, is this going to continue? It did so far. 
It did. Ten targets. I mean, well, the yeah. only other person that came, I mean, Zach Ertz tied him with ten. Ertz and went honestly, out with an injury in that one too, didn't he? I think. Yeah. So this is getting pretty dire as far as well, weapons go for, for the Eagles. It'll be um interesting to see what happens when Alshon comes back hopefully soon and Deshaun Jackson comes back here. We'll see how this changes things up. They they need to throw the ball to somebody. <laughs> yeah. I mean they they really, really do. All right. How about Steelers, Browns? And Steelers are good. They're actually they're, they're a pretty good team right now. Just blew out the Browns, who now dropped a four and two, but Steelers five and oh. Everything. I mean, it was Roethlisberger didn't have to do a lot. 162 in a touchdown. Connor 12 or 20 for 101 in a touchdown. Benny Snow ran one in. Chase Claypool ran one in. So Claypool, the big fan, uh, pickup of last week, went four for 74, which is, I mean, it was fine. It's just there wasn't a lot going to anybody. They didn't, they just dominated. They didn't really have to throw the ball around a lot. Um, James Washington did lead in targets and caught a touchdown, but Claypool ran one in. So it's hard to judge off this game when they get up and run the ball 37 times. Yeah. I mean, it does show how good the Steelers defense is because mm-hmm. they made Cleveland once again. I mean, Cleveland, and it's very easy to go back to the narrative that Cleveland is not good. Right. But I mean, they're four and two, they've definitely shown growth. They've, they've actually been okay. So I do think this is more, how good Pittsburgh is rather than what, how dysfunctional Cleveland is like, like last year. Um, the, the only thing, last thing I do want to mention about Pittsburgh, once again, Juju yeah, done. does he not just, show up. Right. No, and and no. I know that this is a strange game, but at the same time, no, he just, uh, there's, he's just not Claypool, showing up at all. Yeah. I mean, what do you have? He was two for six. I mean, at this point, are you, are you benching Juju? Are Are you, I mean, what the heck do you it do? Depends, with Juju? Well, I guess it depends on who else I have, but yeah, very well. I would I would consider it for sure at this point, if, depending on my roster. Um, it's just not happening. I don't I don't know what else to say. It's not happening. It's it's very strange. It's very very strange. Um, Brown side of things. So Baker um, he came into this thing injured. I don't know how much this has to do with injury and how much this had to do with just the Steelers were that good, but he didn't really do well, and they pulled him. Um, Kareem Hunt, 13 for 40. And then the receivers, just not much there. I mean, Hooper led the way with five for 52. It's just an ugly game for the Browns. You're not going to get anything good fantasy there. Um, how about uh, Bears, Panthers? Bears win 23 16 and are now five and one. And I, I'm going to still say it they're the worst five and one team I've seen. I'm telling you, they're not that good. Somebody's going to get upset about this, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. We've said it a lot. No one, I think everyone kind of agrees. At some point, they're going to be like, okay, as soon as they hit a certain point, you're five and one, you figured out a way to win. But yeah, it, every time they do it, it's ugly. I mean, I I, I, I don't know. I, I, I keep scratching my head of like, how in the world are they continuing to do this just on defense alone for the most part? Because once again, Nick Foles, it was not because of him, <laughs> right? I mean, he was 23 for 39. Almost, almost 200 yards passing, one TD, one yeah. interception. It is not the passing game by any stretch of the mm-hmm. imagination, and it's not the rushing the game. game. It's just, I don't know what it is. I mean, David Montgomery <laughs> went, it was 19 carries for 58 yards, so that's 3.1 it's a, per. It's and a solid then, defense. <laughs> and Nick Foles is the one that rushes in the touchdown. Yeah. So, I mean, I am, I'm always shocked when you, when you go over this and you're like, what? even Allen Robinson did not have a good game. He did, was targeted nine times, so that's good to see. Uh, and you know, but only five for 53. So uh, across the board, it just, um, they got the win very good for them. Uh, you know, don't want to completely take it away from them, but their offense is strange when you look at a five and one team and you're like, I don't think I can really play any of these guys. Like, rely you know, on that defense played. Yeah. And you know, and you want to play David Montgomery because he's a running back. Mm-hmm. He's a starter. He's going to get 19 carries. You're like, maybe he'll get in the end zone. But other than that, you're, you're just like, well, how, how are they doing this? Mm-hmm. Then uh, Panthers side of things, Br- Bridgewater wasn't good today. Two sixteen, <laughs> no, two picks. A, I mean, this is an it, ugly it day. A, it was yeah. a rough day for quarterbacks in general, and I we mean, haven't just, even gotten to Aaron Rodgers yet. I mean, it just in general. I mean, Mike Davis, eighteen for fifty-two. He got the touchdown to save your day, but he only had two catches for three yards. He had fifty-five total yards. This is not what he had been doing. Um, it's just not a great day. I mean, DJ Moore at least did. Uh, he had five for ninety-three, but it took eleven targets to get those five. And then Robbie Anderson, four for 77. DJ Moore almost had an awesome one-handed catch there at the end that would have um, – it was on fourth down at the end of the game, and he he brought it in. I thought he had the catch and just lost it at the very end. That would have been uh, – it was, I don't even know, 20-some 20, 20 yards. It would have kept the Panthers in it, but couldn't pull it in. But, man, the tar- I like to see the targets. I like to see the targets. That's the – that will – 
This is this seems like a DJ Moore line five for ninety three. That's about like what we're yeah. seeing from him, <laughs> but, but in without touchdowns. So uh, yeah, the yeah. touchdowns that was gonna be rough to come by. I do have to say I'm uh, uh, I don't I don't say a DJ Moore hater, but I do not trust in this team getting him the ball or, and, yep. and kind of you know making that talent work for as well as it could. But he's had a couple of solid games in a row. I'm still yep. of the opinion that because you have a couple of solid games in a row you try to ship him. Would you push back on me? Because you do believe. No, in I mean, him. not if you can get something from him. Cause I don't really, I don't love Teddy Bridgewater. So I just don't see a, a scenario where he really can go become a top receiver this year. I just don't, I just don't love, yeah. Teddy Bridgewater to me is just not that good for this, for fantasy purposes. I just don't like it. So yeah, I would try to trade him if someone's out there willing to go for him. But again, I don't, a lot of these situations, the value, I don't think is there for you. So. Right. Oh, next here we go. Here's a bright spot. Lions, Lions win 34 16. And I love it. I love it. We showed the Jaguars. Here we go. <laughs> but my favorite part DeAndre Swift, 14 carries, 116 yards, okay. two touchdowns. That is, that is a real story. Yeah. I love that. I mean, we've been, we've been preaching that here that at some point this was going to have to turn, right? I did this, yeah, at some like, point. I mean, it is definitely later in the year than we were hoping for. Yep. But he he broke out in a big way. I mean, that was a very impressive game by him. Oh, man, he did it on my bench, but I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use him maybe at some point. Okay, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say you can trust him next week. Um it's the Lions. It's Matt Patricia and I think he likes to do the whole Belichick thing and he's just not going to, you know, He's next week. He'll just like carry on. Johnson will get 20 carries next week. Who knows with, with the way this will go, but Swift is Swift is good. He's better than Adrian Peterson at this point in their careers. Swift needs to be the guy and the lions, please give Swift the ball. Just keep giving him the ball. Uh, receiving wise Galladay four for one Oh five. So not a lot of catches, but turned it into some good yards. And that was it for I mean, Hawkinson got the touchdown. So you played Hawkinson you got yourself the touchdown, so you saved saved your day there. But M- Marvin Jones, I'll say that's another like disappointment on the year in general. Two catches, eight yards. He's not really been doing anything. Then uh, hmm. Jacksonville, Minshew. So Minshew does this. As soon as you rank Minshew high for a week, he does this thing where he doesn't do anything. <laughs> and that's what well, he kind of <laughs> – I was going to say, let's not say do anything. We just went through a bunch of quarterbacks that were like well, – Okay, he got oh, two touchdowns. Two, yeah, two interceptions. Yeah, he, he threw one. He rushed True, one. He did have an interception. Should but... have been better. Yeah, he should have been, but 243 yards. I, I would call this an average performance, like a step yep. back, but not not terrible, right? He yep. didn't he didn't ruin your your yeah. week like yep. a lot of these other guys did. James Robinson had himself what 53 total yards, but re- got a touchdown catch, so he saved his day there. It's he, a couple weeks in a row, he hasn't been great, but he always finds a way yeah, to save the fantasy day. He really right. does. I mean, it, it hasn't looked impressive, but he's getting the job done. I don't know where the heck Keelan Cole all of a sudden came from, but yeah. he had himself a day. Yeah. I mean, he didn't get in the end zone, but 143 yards, you know, off of six catches, he definitely found something that was working. I mean, obviously, I'm not, I don't put too much stock into that, but Keelan Cole has yeah. been productive in past years. He is so up and down. You have no idea. Uh, this team is strange, yeah. but um, I don't know. Is he, is he <laughs> like streaming or anything? Like, is he even on your radar? I don't, I don't know, honestly. Yeah, I would, I would say no, because I, I, no, I, mean, I think this is more fluky than anything else. Yeah. He, I mean, he started the year with just a lot of like five and four and five and six for 40, 50, 60. And then he has one decent game. I think it's just a one week thing. I can't trust that. Just no, no. Uh, Cause Chark, Chark still had 14 targets today. He just didn't turn it into anything. It was seven for 45. I know. Um, it's credit the credit many. credit the great Detroit Lions defense. So yeah, it must be that secondary they pay so well. Yep. Yeah. All right. How about uh Dolphins? 24 nothing over the Jets. Wow. <laughs> oh god, the Jets Assert are your so dominance, bad. Miami. Way to oh, go. the Jets are so bad. So bad. I mean <sighs> clean house, man. That's a garbage I, fire. Oh, I mean, even Crowder, they Crowder did nothing today. Or he did nothing. He still got his 13 targets, still got his seven catches. It was just only 48 yards today. So, oh, that's all. I don't care about the Jets. You you use Crowder and that's it, right? And you don't feel great about using Crowder, but I think he'll be better. He'll be good more often than not just because someone has to get the ball. But that, that is a bad team. That is a yeah. really bad team. Um, Dolphins, yeah, Fitzpatrick, 191, three touchdowns. Did throw two picks, but, you know, 
okay there. Gaskin, 18 for 91, solid there. 35 yards through through the, um, receiving the ball, solid. That, I'll tell you, that's another guy that, like James Robinson, he is just finding <laughs> yeah. a way to get it done. And if you have them on your team, you're like kind of laughing because you're like, I, I have no names in my backfield and they're doing well for me. So yeah. I have to throw it like good for Gaskin, really. Yeah. And Tua, he got to play. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Look right. at that. Two for two. Nine yeah, minutes. he's 100%. He has got to have an incredible <laughs> QB rating. <laughs> oh, then uh, receiving wise, so Parker, three for 35. He left with a groin injury. So that's what happens with Devontae Parker. Preston Williams caught himself a touchdown. And Adam Shaheen caught a touchdown too. So, yeah, it was a, they didn't really have to do anything. They got up in this no. game and just it was easy. All right. So how about the final game for us to talk about? Tampa just uh, dominates Green Bay, thirty-eight to ten. I yeah. did. This is kind of unexpected. I mean, not that not that they won the game's not unexpected. That you could definitely see them winning this thing, but the way it happened, and I guess start with Rodgers. I mean, sixteen of thirty-five, one hundred and sixty yards and two picks. And uh, first of all, I thought I was. I I had a lot of very good performances from a lot of guys. My team scored a lot of points this week. And I thought maybe because I have Aaron Rodgers on a lot of my teams. Oh, wow. This is going to go well. I was watching the first quarter. He uh, rushes one in and, and yeah. then they, he was down at the one yard line. Then Aaron Jones takes yep. that. And I'm like, okay, they're doing great. They're up 10, nothing. They're moving the ball. And then as soon as I say that the lights go out, Aaron Rodgers starts throwing, you know, pick sixes and, and yeah. they never recover. I mean, he in Scott Fishbowl, Aaron Rodgers got me negative points. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it was bad. I mean, I, I do not – I was in my head – this is how far ahead of myself I got. I was, like, ranking, like, quarterbacks. If you were actually going to have to grab a guy, like, who would you want heading your football team for one week, right? And I'm like, oh, wow, it would be, like, Russell Wilson and then, like, Mahomes and then maybe Aaron Rodgers after that because he's playing so Ooh, good. Yeah, and then <laughs> – and then I'm like, what in the world is going on? I know Tampa Bay's defense is pretty good. I mean, we've, we've seen them mm-hmm. do well. But um, it's not like Aaron Rodgers to throw interceptions, turn the ball over. And it's not like him to fall into a three-quarter funk. Usually he can find his way back. I mean, yeah. I mean, what what is this? What, I, what, I think it's a – hopefully it's – it might just be a one week like aberration because this was really bad. I think Tam- it's a combination. Tampa's just a, a better defense. And I think those, those picks just kind of ended this thing. It, it was weird. I don't even know how to explain this from Rogers. This, this isn't going to continue. I, I, I wouldn't be terribly worried about it. I think just the way games go sometimes, you know, they get, they can get out of hand. And it was the whole team. Like the running game did nothing. Aaron Jones, 10 carries, 15 yards. He got that one touchdown, like you said. I was going to say, he got vultured it good. (laughs) I mean, nothing much. It's ugly. Yeah, yeah. Devonta Adams even, I mean, 10 targets, 61 yards. Um, Tanyan, three for 25. Yeah, He did did look a little, He at one play he came back, or he was hobbled. I did not hear anything definitive as far as if that's going to be a lingering thing. Or I know he played after that, but it it was kind of one of those weird – no one touched him and his leg kind of shook. And then he just kind of, you know, yeah. hobbled to the sideline. So yeah, I've just, not heard yet either on that one. Just making sure. Cause a lot of people, we'll see. including myself, you know, <laughs> grabbed him off the waivers and that would suck. Um, anyway, to the happy side of the football. Yeah. So one. Brady threw himself two touchdowns. Didn't have to do a lot, but really 166 yards because Ronald Jones has turned into a player. Another, another great game. Yeah, 113 yards, two touchdowns. He's had 100 yards in th- uh, three straight games. That's, uh, you know, just playing very solid, and they're giving the ball a lot. And Fournette, I think, was active for this one again, but didn't – I think he was active. I, maybe he wasn't, actually. I don't even know at this point. I thought he was going to be active and just um, nothing, nothing. No. So, uh, just ugly, <laughs> ugly for Fournette. I don't know what happened to him, but um, other than that, Receiving wise, Gronk. How about Gronk? I mean, finally, but too little, too late, <laughs> kind of. I mean, how much can you, how much stock do you put into this, right? Because how many times over the past six weeks have I been burned by Gronk? Quite a few already, because trying to stream him, trying to do whatever with a lot of guys going on IR, getting hurt. And finally, he does have a good game. But once again, I mean, it is five, only five catches. He did get in the end zone great. Um, 
I don't I don't know how much stock I can even put in this. I, I know, feel a little too a little too shell shocked from his his first. Well, you know, I think it's okay. So the first couple of weeks he didn't do anything, right? But then coming to week three, I mean, this is again these aren't huge numbers, but he was six for forty eight with seven targets. Okay, you know, it's something there. He didn't do anything against the Chargers, one for twenty nine off three targets. But then last week he had six targets, three for fifty two, and then he has eight targets for five for seventy eight and a touchdown. Honestly, I think it could be a thing. I could it could be building here. And he's getting into it. I mean, he took a whole year off, and he had no preseason to get himself back into it. Maybe it just took a little bit. And um, forget how big this guy is. And I was watching the game, and there was they showed like um, one of the they had the camera right there, like in the huddle, and you just realize how massive he was compared to like even like Mike Evans. He was like just towering over Mike Evans. It was just like, man, this guy is a big big guy. I think you know what I'm. He led the team at targets. I think it's yeah, that could be a thing. Okay. Yeah. You are making me feel better about it, but I, I, I feel, I feel like he's, uh, I I'm hoping he, t- I mean, and once again, I mean, if to argue against my, my timidness on, on going completely gronk, but I mean, this is coming after OJ Howard goes down with an injury yeah, true. and to be fair as well, Godwin comes back in this game. And I was wondering if this would affect Evans, right? Because Evans has been hobbled and he's been doing an admirable job being the number one wide receiver. And you can tell that they completely went away from Evans, right? He only oh, had yeah. two targets. He had one catch. Chris Godwin, he had seven targets. They try to get him it. But I do wonder as well, with Gronk and the way things are going, even though I do see him being more of a of a piece, but I'm wondering if that would be more of 30, 40 yards a game. Do you think that when Godwin and Evans are are healthy together, that will affect how they use Gronk? Or do you think that he's the tight end and – Brady is getting to the point where you can only yell his O line so much, and he's like, "I'm going to throw it to whoever's open." I think um, I don't if if Gronk can play decently like this, I don't think it's going to affect him with Godwin Evans. I think it's the player seems like maybe it'll affect his Evans in a way, but um, no, I think I just think you know it's not going to be like the old Gronk numbers. I'll say that, but if he gets you five six catches and 70, 80 yards, I think you can see that, and he could be a they could look for him in the end zone or in the red zone a little bit, you know? So I don't think it's going to, I don't think Godwin and Evans are going to affect him too much. Really don't. So yeah, good, good win for Tampa, but all right. I think that's it for the week six uh, recap. A lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of ugliness today. It wasn't like a lot of great performances, but you know, eh, it happens some weeks, you know, when you're going, it's, it's what we still got. We still got a lot left almost, almost halfway through the fantasy regular season though. Next week's episode, we'll say we're beyond halfway of episode. Right. So we're getting there already. It's crazy. When in the, I guess the good thing is there was no games canceled for this week. So everything played today, which was small victories. You know, but all right, that will do it for today. Talk to you guys tomorrow.